Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this uh, Thursday, Thursday night, May 18th, 2023, getting close to June. Goodness. Uh, it is about 1037 p.m. here along the West Coast in the state of California. Latest activity shows a 3.0 over here around the Java Trench. This comes after some uh, pretty large earthquake activity striking out here around the Vanuatu area and the Loyalty Islands area down here uh, as listed on the map. This is coming off of a 7.7 .7 earthquake in the Loyalty Islands area. Uh, I do want to bring up the latest information from the Tsunami Warning Center where as of right now there is still a tsunami threat as of 10.38 p.m. here West Coast Time, California. Uh, and the tsunami threat is for the Vanuatu area for uh, tsunami waves up to one meter in height. The latest informational threat here from the Tsunami Warning Center states uh, that the area of Vanuatu still poses, uh, poses a little bit of elevated uh, water height here, about one meter above the tide level or possible for some coasts uh, around the Vanuatu area. Less than 0.3 meters for the mentioned areas here of Australia, American Samoa, um, Tonga, and listed areas here. So this is the latest informational statement from the tsunami.gov website. Now there has been some observed sites here uh, far as the tsunami wave height. These are the observations being reported here um, across the area. So it looks like so far the largest in the uh, Vanuatu area, 1.7 feet uh, tsunami. So not a big deal, definitely not a big deal, but this could cause a little bit of localized flooding. And of course, if anyone's in the water at that time could issue, uh, it could cause some issues there uh, with folks being able to, uh, well, not properly get out of the water or be swept out to the sea. Um, so for the latest information here, go to tsunami dot gov there's also a tsunami site for the australian region as mentioned uh, in chat uh, timothy does post quite a bit of information here uh, bom.gov.au uh, for the uh, latest informational statement there around australia looks like currently uh, tsunami threat to offshore australian islands and territories around the lord uh, how how hopefully island Again, this came off of a 7.7 .7 earthquake. Now, this area is no stranger. Absolutely no stranger there to large earthquakes. Uh, looking at the historical data map here, shows very active conditions here in the 6 and 7 range here over since about the 1900 or so, and I'm sure beyond that. Uh, I did want to pull up the earthquakes so far this year. So this 7.7 .7 that struck is the second largest earthquake so far this year. First one being back in um, early February around the Turkey region. Of course, they've seen uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity and they're still seeing that today. Uh, but over here in Turkey, that's where the uh, largest earthquake so far has occurred. But this one down here into the uh, Loyalty Islands area, the second largest earthquake of the year goodness no eight pointers yet but uh you know the the average here of earth uh, earthquakes around the eight point or above range range from roughly a couple years or so we did see 2000 uh when was it 2021 uh where we seen three eight pointers in the year that was pretty crazy so most of the activity right now confined to our major regions here of the uh, southern end here well the kind of southwestern edge here of the uh, uh, pacific ring of fire very active conditions here over the last week this is the last seven days of activity we have seen quite a bit of deeper movement here around the tonga trench talking about earthquakes here even today uh, let's go back here to the last day we've seen some deeper movement quakes here way down there almost 600 kilometers deep here earlier this morning and uh, a little bit of subsequent shallower earthquake activity around Tonga, uh, 172 kilometers. But we mentioned this this morning. If we didn't see any larger scale movement up here 
around the Tonga Trench to watch for areas around the Vanuatu area and Solomon Islands region. This is where all the momentum tends to accumulate here, far as stress goes. Uh, a look at the stress plate. Uh, you got the Vanuatu area roughly around in this region right here. It notices dip. Uh, it is a subduction zone, but this earthquake occurred upstream. The general plate movement here in the arrows, that shows the GPS coordinates of all the plates. And the arrows here indicating the subduction zone, that they are separating from each other, that indicates a divergent boundary uh, or a uh, transform type boundary up here along the San Andreas Fault. Uh, so this area definitely noticing um, a lot of stress and strain along this region here following the deeper movement quakes here into the Tonga Trench area. So uh, it only makes sense to where that buildup would be accumulated. And that's exactly what's happened here today so far uh, into the, um, oh, again, just south of the Port Villa area of Vanuatu region, region. So what do we have so far for earthquake activity? Well, 7.7, .7, a largest aftershock so far of 5.9 occurring about 38 kilometers deep. Quite a few fives occurring in there as well. And uh, I'm certain of many other smaller quakes there. This is a uh, uh, considerably large earthquake uh, in this area. If we were to go back here uh, and search the earthquake catalog, uh, I think we're gonna do that real quick and just see what we have here uh, for large earthquakes in this area. We're gonna go 7.0 and above and I just want to really go back in time and see what we have here uh, since the year 1000 or so. Um, probably not going to cover all of that, but we're going to draw a little rectangle on the map here. Just get a, a, a visual of what's going on out here uh, across the area south of the Vanuatu region. I think that covers it right. Let's see here. Uh, I would say so. So let's see what we got. Let's go ahead and take a look here across the area. And um, new is first, of course, it's going to be that 7.7 .7 today. Locally, uh, there's been some other sevens here. It looks like 1995, another 7.7 .7 up here. Again, this is a, a subduction zone area. Uh, you got uh, one plate subducting underneath the other. And uh, notice there's a lot of deeper earthquake activity here across the region. Subsequent shallower, larger activity. Uh, the largest magnitude, at least within this area, shows to be an 8.1 further upstream around the Vanuatu area, a little bit closer to the Port Villa area back in 1920. So some of these earthquakes can get rather large, but again, the 7.7, .7, I would say, uh, is a fairly large earthquake. And it does rank up here uh, number three uh, so far in the largest uh, earthquake sequence that records have been kept in this specific region. So I don't think we're gonna see any larger earthquake activity in this area. But we do need to watch out uh, for the subsequent activity that, you know, the uh, um, the domino effect, so to speak. Uh, with a deeper activity back building here, uh, enough strain built up here along this plate boundary for some large earthquake activity most of the momentum, if you really think about it, should ramp back up here across the Tonga area potentially or along this plate boundary here around, around the uh, Papua New Guinea region. As listed here on the GPS coordinates here, shows that momentum generally playing a part here towards the northwest with the arrows pointing towards the northwest. Uh, so we'll watch these areas here potentially for an uptick uh, in earthquake movement here uh, throughout the next few days or so. It could take a couple weeks, but uh, either way, it's definitely a lot of large-scale activity taking place here currently. So we'll watch regions around the plate boundary. Uh, doesn't look like we've seen anything major kicking up following this activity. It's definitely uh, you know, a pretty good shift of the plate. Let's see what we got here along the west coast. Uh, one earthquake here, well, not the west coast, but over here around the New Madrid seismic zone, a 2.3. This one uh, coming in within the last hour. This is another major seismically active zone uh, there in the Tiptonville, Tennessee area. Beautiful state of Tennessee. Greenery galore. I love that region. 7.4 kilometers deep for that earthquake. A little bit of movement across the beautiful state of Kansas as well. 
Uh, up into the Yellowstone area, nothing going on, but you know me, I kind of like to see what these large earthquakes do to the seismograph stations. And a 7.7, .7, this is, you know, again, thousands of miles away, uh, showing up here across the uh, Wyoming area. Initial P wave, subsequent S waves here. These are surface waves traveling across and uh, sometimes through uh, the Earth. This is Wyoming showing that 7.7 .7 in the uh, Loyalty Islands area. A lot of these stations didn't pick it up, uh, but this was a relatively shallow earthquake. I think it was about, oh, 40 kilometers deep, if I remember. Let me go double check here and see. Um, yeah, 37 kilometers deep, so relatively shallow. Sometimes these deeper movement quakes send out a tremor. Uh, or a seismic wave that is picked up much larger uh, on these distant seismograph stations. I was actually expecting a much larger signature, uh, but it does look like it was a long duration event. And of course the S waves traveling across the earth currently, probably as we speak, uh, all, yep, yeah, these look a little bit rattled up. These are the live seismograph stations across various uh, areas around the globe. As you can see, these are very wavy squiggly lines indicating uh, the uh, surface waves still traveling around the earth pretty crazy to think about all right uh, let's go back here to the uh, map the usgs map here last 24 hours of earthquake activity um not a whole lot going on throughout the pacific northwest let me check out trimmer map here tonight and see what's going on here we'll have to check out uh, trimmer tomorrow and see if we got any adjustments uh, following this activity today a slight uptick in earthquake or uh, at least tremor activity here across the Oregon region that uh, that activity mostly northwest of Medford underneath the uh, Grants Pass and Roseburg area this is tremor occurring down dip into the Cascadia subduction zone a little slight uptick there across the region I don't think we've seen any elevated activity but a little bit of movement upstream here closer to the Cascadia uh, offshore of the Oregon coast at 1.8 uh, coming in uh, looks like earlier this morning uh, Northern California Lake Almanor area we did see a little bit of uptick here across the region of Lake Almanor a couple twos and some threes out there over the last 24 hours still watching this region that's well south of Mount Lassen but uh, out here along a newly discovered fault system there underneath the lake. Uh, far as Southern California goes, lighten up slightly. A couple ones out there across the area of Southern Cal. Nothing major going on. Uh, but again, we're in the early stages of the, uh, well, cause and effect type reaction here following that 7.7 .7 south of the Vanuatu area. I'm still waiting to see what may be kicked up. Um, because that's definitely a lot of earthquake activity. West Coast right now, pretty quiet. South America region. Um, let's see what we got here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Uh, looks like we did see a 4.3 into the Chile area. That earthquake occurring uh, fairly recently, about 9 o'clock or so, following the 7.7 .7 over there in the Loyalty Islands area. Uh, so a little bit of pressure built up here across the South America region, but nothing major. Again, we'll watch this activity uh, for some, uh, well, there's a couple different directions this could go. We could see a major increase here across the Java Trench, or we could start to see some major back building here uh, following this adjustment upstream here from the Tonga Trench south into the Kermadec Islands. We we'll continue to watch that. and. Uh, see how it plays out uh, GeoNet servers I, got, I definitely got to check out GeoNet servers because uh, the New Zealand area pretty close in geological terms here of um, uh, to this earthquake the earthquake drums here gonna show that 7.7 .7 and there we go that's gonna be it right here because it's a relatively shallow earthquake it did not show up as strongly as I would expect it to. Uh, it seems like these deeper earthquake movements tend to add more of a, of a punch in terms of the seismic signature, but it did show up pretty nicely here across 
the areas of New Zealand. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. Let me double check this tsunami warning center here again real quick. There's still a threat, folks, as of 10.52 p.m. West Coast time, California. Latest informational statement here is 7.7. Uh, still shows uh, tsunami waves have been observed. Uh, there is uh, obviously hazardous tsunami waves uh, for some coasts with Vanuatu area in the brunt, 0.3 to 1 meter above the tide level. So not a Pacific wide tsunami threat, but still some elevated waves above the typical tide levels. All right, space weather activity is ramping up like popcorn here on a, on a well, Thursday night. I guess you can have a, a movie with some popcorn on a Thursday night, right? Uh, we are popping here, so to speak, with M-flare activity and some uh, rather large M-flare activity as well. Notice these uh, lines here peeking up very drastically into the M-flare category. Uh, this is all coming off of a regional sunspot here, a couple different regional sunspots that is continuously popping here with M flares and C flares on the northeastern section of the sun and also down here on the southeastern of, uh, section of the sun. Uh, this is definitely ramping up pretty nicely. I think we're going to have to watch these sunspots very closely. Uh, this sunspot region here looks very drastic in terms of complex structure and also down here on the southeastern limb of the sun. This, these two are um, some troublemakers, so to speak, and these will be producing some large M flares, potentially an X flare. We have raised the X flare potential up to 15% chance from a 5% because of that elevated activity. 55% chance for an M flare. C flare, obviously, we're well above that at almost 100% chance. And uh, as these rotate into the Earth view, they will obviously uh, provide a threat for a CME possibility. Doesn't look like we've seen any major blasted CMEs kicking off here from the sunspots, but we'll continue to watch that uh, in the days ahead, hours ahead, I should say, as uh, these rotate further into view. They're, they're, uh, I would say these two sunspots are more active than, uh, than uh, well, the past few months. Uh, earlier this year, we've seen a little bit of an uptick, but uh, these... These two sunspots pose some noteworthy watching here for some very large flare activity. Uh, currently no aurora forecast here, very minimal at best, but I think that's going to change pending. These uh, provide us with a show in the coming days. Uh, far as Storm Prediction Center goes, a little bit of noise being making out there in the Texas Panhandle tonight, which of course probably is appreciated considering they are in a portion of a drought. Much needed rainfall kicking up out there. As far as tomorrow goes, a little bit of elevated threat for severe weather across Texas, Oklahoma, and the portions of Arkansas. Mostly hail threat uh, and wind. Tornado threat only looks to be about 2% chance. So uh, just heed any weather warnings out there and uh, make sure you have, a, of course, obviously a weather radio handy. Um, let's see. I think that's about it, folks. Again, uh, that's a lot of activity kicking up here, but again, this is a, a rather large earthquake and these aftershocks will continue, no doubt, for a little while. It's the subsequent sh uh, earthquake activity that I'm kind of worried about, uh, depending on where that may transpire. Uh, I think it's going to work its way around this plate boundary, but we'll continue to watch that and provide updates as they become available. Have a good night, folks. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe. Appreciate all the mods out there tonight helping out and uh, we'll catch you guys back here sometime uh, tomorrow morning for the update there on this uh, on a Friday hopefully a beautiful Friday take care folks